Welcome to our training on an engineer's guide to remote monitoring systems. We've been helping with remote monitoring applications for over 15 years. Today, we will be introducing data acquisition technology, how IoT, Internet of Things technology works, how to collect data wirelessly, how remote monitoring systems work, and we will be giving a live demonstration of a remote monitoring system with SCADA software. If you have any questions, please enter them into the chat box and we'll be answering them at the end of the training. I'm Maria Santella, sales manager here at ICP-DAS USA and have worked for ICP-DAS USA for over 11 years. I was previously an application engineer. Later in the training, Robert Morrell, one of our senior application engineers, who has worked for the company for over 10 years, will be showing you a live demonstration of a remote monitoring system with SCADA software. ICP-DAS USA provides industrial control products and data acquisition systems. We provide industrial data acquisition, data communication, automation, control, wireless, and tested measurement products. ICP-DAS established in 1993 focuses on improving industrial automation technology. We provide ROHS compliant lead-free equipment, have our ISO 9001 certification, thoroughly test our products, and provide reliable and stable innovative solutions. We have a knowledgeable team. Many members have worked for the company for over 10 or 20 years. We provide free consultation and can specify products for your applications provide free technical support, and can help you with questions, setting up equipment, and troubleshooting issues. Our products are very reliable and come with a one-year warranty. We carry a large inventory and can ship the same day you place an order, and can usually ship within about a week when items run out of inventory. We have training webinars every month on the latest industrial automation technology, and also have a vast library of training videos and other tutorials up on our website. We provide free easy data logger software for data logging, control and monitoring that works with most of our data acquisition equipment and can work with other vendors Modbus devices as long as you have one of our Modbus devices in the network. We provide a variety of equipment that can be used in industrial environments. Our products come in fire retardant plastic or metal housings that support operating temperatures as low as negative 25 C to 75 C or negative 13 Fahrenheit to 167 degrees Fahrenheit. We also provide conformal coating for $25, which extends the operating temperature down to negative 40 degrees Celsius and up to 85 degrees Celsius or negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit to 185 degrees Fahrenheit. Our equipment is powered by low DC voltage and often powered by solar panels. Our equipment has low power consumption. Data acquisition, it's the process of sampling real world physical information and the conversion of those samples into digital numeric values that computers and controllers can understand. The information is often used to implement control logic operations like the turning on of a fan based on the temperature, the turning on of a pump based on a tank level, and the opening of a valve based on pressure levels. Data acquisition information can be collected by a computer running SCADA software or a touchscreen PLC. Data can be logged or displayed on a screen. You can turn equipment on or off with the push of a button. Analog is a variable or adjustable measurement like a temperature, pressure, and a flow rate. Digital information is fixed and is either on or off a light and a light switch is an example of something that can be either on or off. A dimmable light is variable in intensity and is analog. Data acquisition modules read values, store them in memory, put the values in a register table, and sends data in the registers when requested by PLCs, controllers, or software. Data from sensors like flow rate, temperature, pressure, and carbon dioxide is acquired from data acquisition equipment like our ET7026 analog and digital-based Ethernet and Modbus TCP-based module. The data is passed over Ethernet cabling to SCADA software running on a computer with a Windows operating system. 
We have a wide range of industrial data acquisition equipment, including remote and rack-based IO in many types, including voltage, current, thermistor, thermocouple, RTD, strain gauge, digital, relay output, and accelerometers. Our data acquisition products are available in many protocols and interfaces, including Modbus RTU, Modbus TCP, Ethernet IP, EtherCAT, USB, RS-485, Profibus, CanOpen, DeviceNet, Wi-Fi, Zigbee, and more. We manufacture different kinds of data acquisition technology that provides flexibility for many kinds of applications. Our remote IO modules are communicable over different protocols, including Modbus RTU, Modbus TCP, BACnet, CanOpen, DeviceNet, Ethernet IP, EtherCAT, MQTT, and Profinet. Protocols are like languages that devices can communicate in, each with their own rules, syntax, synchronization, and error recovery methods. Modbus is one of the most commonly used protocols, and it's a simple, standard, and robust serial-based communications protocol used for industrial communications for instrumentation, control, and data acquisition. It was originally published in 1979 by Modicon for use with its PLCs. Many software applications support Modbus, including SCADA software, LabVIEW, Daisy Lab, Visual Basic, and C language. Some data acquisition equipment allows for power and data to go through the same cable, like our PET 7000 series, power over Ethernet remote IO modules that communicate over Modbus TCP, and our USB IO that are powered over USB. Power over Ethernet helps you save on wiring and additional power supplies, and is commonly used in data centers and building automation systems. Wireless remote IO, like our WF2000 series, transmit Modbus TCP communication over Wi-Fi networks, and our ZT2000 Zigbee wireless data acquisition modules communicate over Modbus RTU. Remote IO modules are convenient for control panels, machines, monitoring systems, and for adding IO in applications that are spread out across different areas. RS-485 Modbus RTU wired communication supports communication distances up to 4,000 feet, which can be extended with a repeater like our I-7510. Modbus TCP communication over ethernet cabling supports communication up to 328 feet, which can be extended with ethernet switches like our NS-205. USB 2.0 communication is up to about 16 feet and can be extended with USB hubs like our USB 2560. Zigbee wireless communication supports communication up to 2,297 feet and can be extended with a repeater like ZT2510. Each end device also acts as a repeater in the network. So depending on the topology or layout of your system, you may not need any additional repeaters. Wi-Fi supports communication distances up to 328 feet and can be extended with Wi-Fi access points or bridges like our WF2572. We also provide serial and ethernet rack-based data acquisition solutions that use cartridge IO and are ideal for fitting a lot of IO in a very small area. Our standalone data loggers have sensors and memory on board for data logging. Some have alarms so you can hear sounds or send alerts out based on undesirable conditions. Some come with phone apps so you can see the temperature, carbon monoxide, or carbon dioxide levels on your smartphone. Our PC boards come in a wide range of analog and digital IO combinations and come with Windows and Linux-based drivers, software development kits, and demo programs. We make PCI Express, PCI, and ISA-type boards. We also provide PC communication boards, including CAN bus, device net, and serial types. So you can add a CAN, device net, or serial communication port to your computer through the internal PCI slot. Our power meters communicate over Modbus RTU or Modbus TCP or CAN open and provide energy monitoring information, including power factor, true RMS voltage, 
true RMS current, active power in kilowatts, active energy in kilowatt hours. Now, kilowatt hours is a measurement of how much energy you're using per hour. It also provides measurements of reactive power, frequency, and more. Um, this is convenient, so you don't have to do that extra calculation in your application to provide those measurements. You just pull the data from the data acquisition module or the power meter. Data acquisition modules collect and provide sensor information for computers and controllers to interface with. Through communication drivers, software running on computers or controllers like PLCs can receive the data acquisition information and implement control logic operations like the turning on of a pump based on a tank level or the turning on of a fan or alarm based on a temperature or carbon monoxide level. Software like Indusoft, Aviva, Easy Data Logger, and LabVIEW provide visualization through waveforms, pictures, graphics, and IO status. You can show buttons with measurement values on them and show them in green if the condition is desirable, yellow if the level is okay, and red if the level's out of range. With PLCs and software, you can perform calculations on the data you acquired, trigger outputs like motors and relays based on the inputs, and can generate reports and data logs. In the past, a lot of monitoring systems were done manually, where one had to go by every tank and take different measurements by hand and then write the information down by hand. SCADA, supervisory control and data acquisition software allows for control and industrial processes, uh, control of industrial processes locally at remote locations. It also allows for the seeing of the status of your application on different screens, like the on or off status, the open or closed status of valves, and the weight of materials on a conveyor. It can show the information in green or red based on desirable or undesirable conditions. Different users have different levels of access to the system, and the system can be published over a web page for viewing through a web browser from any location. Graphics can be shown on the screen to quickly and easily show the general overview of the important elements you need to monitor. Reports can be set to generate and be emailed out automatically based on a schedule. Calculations and computations can be done on the sensor data and provide for the system to know when to proceed to the next step in a process. Trend graphs can show the levels of a measurement over time or when a blade on a machine is going dull if energy consumption starts to increase for no apparent reason. Apps like Aviva's iOS and Android apps allow for remote monitoring from smartphones and tablets. With Google Maps API, our GPS 721MRTU, or the GTP541M, and IndieSoft or Aviva SCADA software, you can show the locations of vehicles or different mobile systems out in the field. You can trigger alarms based on conditions and alert personnel for op operations optimization. Industries that use data acquisition technology are growing, and Industry 4.0 technology is helping technology implementation in the changing world of manufacturing. The Industrial Revolution through history reflects the shift towards machine manufacturing. The first Industrial Revolution was from the mid-1700s to the mid-1800s and moved production of textiles from hundreds of weavers' homes to factories with the invention of the steam engine and cotton gin. The second industrial revolution was from 1870 to 1914. Electricity and steel enabled manufacturing to increase the efficiency and made factory machinery more productive. Transportation innovations, including roads, railroads, and steamboats paved the way for a great expansion and new opportunities. The third industrial revolution began about 1970 and was marked by a shift from mechanical technology to digital computing and improvements in communication technology. Computers, microprocessors, cell phones, and the internet were innovations that brought a huge rise in automated manufacturing production, emerging software, robotics, process machinery, and web-based services. The PLC programmable logic controller gave rise to high-level automation. Industry 4.0, or the fourth 
Industrial Revolution started about 2011 with smart automation, autonomous systems, IoT, Internet of Things, device interconnectivity and interoperability, artificial intelligence, machine learning, analytics, network connections, advanced robotics, insights and optimization of all manufacturing processes. Emerging technologies during this time include Internet of Things, Industrial Internet of Things, 3D printing, and augmented reality. The IoT Internet of Things involves data acquisition and interconnected physical objects using technologies and software that help exchange data with devices and systems over the internet. The devices need to be individually addressable and don't necessarily need to be connected to the internet. As IoT started to evolve, we were calling it remote monitoring, and we were helping with getting data wirelessly from data acquisition modules over the internet through the cellular network or through Wi-Fi to SCADA software for data logging, report generation, monitoring, and control. Some of our IoT applications involve tank monitoring, truck tracking, building automation, power monitoring, alarm notification, and control systems. One of the very first remote monitoring applications I ever helped with was someone wanted an email sent to them when their teenager used their jacuzzi when they were out of town. I had them set up one of our M7018 thermocouple type data acquisition modules. Uh, they had a thermocouple connected to it to monitor the temperature of the jacuzzi. Um, they were running our free easy data logger software on the computer and they set it up so they would get an email alarm every time the jacuzzi was above 100 degrees. In many IoT applications, data is collected from sensors like carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, tank level, pressure, humidity, temperature, or on-off status, and is passed back over the internet to computers or cloud-based systems that run software for control logic operations, scheduling operations, data logging, monitoring, and control. The information may be shown locally on the HMI human machine interface with a touchscreen, like our TPD series. The system can take the sensor data acquired from data acquisition equipment, process the information, and perform automated instructions. A database may store all the data and can be queried by SCADA software running on a computer. You can often see the status of all your systems over a web page from any device. IIoT concentrators like our WISE 5231 logs data and gathers the status of data acquisition equipment out at remote locations, allowing for scheduling operations, triggering outputs based on inputs, and for viewing the status through a web page. With WISE 5231 IIoT concentrators, all the rules and the conditions are set up through drop down menus in a web page, and no programming experience is needed. There's many ways to do remote monitoring wirelessly. You can use our Wi-Fi and Modbus TCP-based remote data acquisition modules for adding in IO over wireless networks, or our Zigbee IO modules, which communicate up to 700 meters line of sight and support IO pairing, where the input on one can trigger the output on another. They also support IO pair grouping, so the input on one can trigger the output on many others. We also have cellular gateways that use a data plan from a cellular provider for passing back data over the internet. The type of wireless you would use is dependent on your application requirements. Wireless systems in a deep underground mine, for example, wouldn't be able to use the cellular network. So a Zigbee wireless self-organizing mesh network may be a better fit for that. It could reroute itself around obstructions as necessary. Wi-Fi IO modules, like our ZT2017 with, like our WF2017 with voltage or current inputs, WF2026 with combination of analog and inputs and analog outputs, digital inputs and digital outputs, and WF2060 with digital inputs and relay outputs are used wireless wirelessly over Wi-Fi networks and pass their information back to the SCADA system over Modbus TCP wirelessly. I7188EXD, one of our C language embedded controllers, is connected to the ZT2550 Zigbee host converter over RS485 and communicates wirelessly 
to the ZT2017 analog input module and ZT2060 digital input and relay output modules. The program running on the embedded controller implements control for a ride in an amusement park. A big boulder is released to fall down a track on the side of the ride when a sensor indicates the presence of the roller coaster cab with the riders in it. Cellular based remote monitoring systems. Um, a lot of them are using our WIMPAC type controllers running our IEC 61131 3 software, uh, which allows you to program in structured text and structured list and ladder logic. And there's various IO modules that plug into the slots. Uh, one of the IO modules is a um, cellular based one. And so for this particular application, you can see the status of the system on a PC running SCADA software. And then you can see the pressure, temperature, and tank level. Uh, we provide a IoT remote monitoring software called IoT Star. It allows for remote management and firmware updates. You can see the data over a web page. You can do maintenance, monitoring, and control. Uh, it could log the data from your IO into a database. You can run this in the cloud or on your computer for remote monitoring. And then we also provide the different kinds of uh, power meter concentrators and you know the IoT concentrator devices that collect all the data from your remote IO modules and power meters. And then that data can get passed back to the monitoring and control software in the cloud. We're helping with a lot of solar power remote monitoring systems where uh, the sun provides energy to the solar panel. Uh, and then the power inverter turns the AC into DC, I mean DC into AC. And the DN843ICT is a current input board and it has current transformers, which you can use and put the cable through there. And it's connected and it puts out a voltage to our ET7017-10 input module. And that's passed back over Modbus TCP to a SCADA software, which shows how much energy is being produced by the solar panels. The TPD433 touchscreen PLCs also show different information about the energy produced by the solar panels at another location. Um, for airplane remote monitoring systems uh, running SCADA software, you can see the different status of the plane systems, uh, like the speed, vertical speed, the temperature, wind pressure, and the atmospheric pressure. Uh, and a lot of, uh, in the aviation industry, they use a lot of the CAN protocol, and they're using these CAN open embedded IO racks with IO slots inside, and also our can open IO modules. Also to connect other types of equipment to the PC, the PC has a USB port, and it's connected to the I7565H1 USB to can converter for connecting various equipment. And we also have for um, connecting through the ethernet port, so you can use an ethernet switch connected to your PC. We have the I7540D, which converts ethernet to CAN. Uh, this is another similar application. So you can see the OPC UA server is, uh, communicates and it, can, it supports MQTT protocol for it's a messaging service for getting IO information. And uh, this can be connected to various remote IO modules, including the Modbus TCP, Modbus RTU type, and it can share information. So you can show the information on your HMI, your SCADA system. You can see the data over a web browser. You can also connect to various other uh, devices like scales, PLCs, and analyzers. Remote monitoring systems allow you to read and log machine data uh, from a distance. You can see the information from anywhere over a web page. You can also stop and start processes from a remote location, which helps you diagnose issues. 
And it also helps with increasing your uptime and optimizing your systems. Uh, we provide free easy data logger software. It's used in a lot of remote monitoring systems. You can connect a lot of our Modbus TCP based remote IO modules over your ethernet network. And you can run easy data logger on a PC and you can monitor and track room occupancy, power consumption, your light and your HVAC status. So you can take your temperature in your different rooms and see all the status on your screen. You can also um, use it with uh, turning things on and off based on conditions. It supports some simple VB script. So you can get data remote, remote data many different ways. Um, often there's a fiber optic cabling for communicating over long distances. Uh, we do provide ethernet to fiber and CAN to fiber and, and many other kinds of converters and switches that you can, can use. They're often buried under the ground. Um, for this application, you can see here, they're running fiber optic cabling out to a water storage level control system. So there's some big water tanks and the view pack that we provide running SCADA software VP25W9 it's helping to control the level of chlorine that's being put into the water system for purifying the water. And there's different measurements that are being taken to bring it to the, the proper levels. And there's also another one of our view packs running SCADA software with various IO modules and power meters. And uh, those are over at a ground pumping well site. And all of this data is being pulled back over fiber optic cabling and wireless over to a, a PC running into soft SCADA software. We also have a TGW712, which is a Modbus RTU to Modbus TCP gateway. It can be powered over ethernet or powered uh, with a 24 volt power supply. And you can see the status of the whole entire system through your cell phone or through a computer uh, with your mobile access through the Thin clients, so basically accessing it over a web page. So now we're going to be turning things over to Robert for a live demonstration of a remote monitoring system using IndieSoft SCADA software. Hello, all. Today I will show you our IndieSoft Web Studio software. IndieSoft is a tag based SCADA software platform designed for Windows operating systems. Uh, there are versions which can run on Windows CE. Windows Embedded, Windows Desktop, and Server Platforms. IndieSoft can be used for small, medium, large, and extra large applications where data logging, remote monitoring, and HMI abilities are required. I will give you a brief overview of IndieSoft, show you some of the features you can use in your HMI design, and show you some industry examples. IndieSoft has a vast library of images and capabilities that can be used in your project. Development is done on a Windows PC using a development license. Runtime licenses are required on the client, which will run the project, whether it be on a full Windows desktop, industrial PC, Windows CE-based HMI, or automation controller. Uh, let me first of all show you some features. I like showing the animation first. The animation shows some of the objects which you can use or gives you some ideas of what you can do in your project on your HMI screen. Uh, the bar graph can be associated with the analog or digital tag to show something as simple as tank level or percentage. Uh, color changes can animate uh, statuses of buttons, uh, alarm statuses, or digital output statuses, like for instance, on off control. Uh, data entry you can use to uh, input a temperature value or a desired tank level. Uh, position and transparency, rotation and size can be used to display statuses of IO points. Uh, co the color changes in the position and transparency can be used to show open close status or you know critical or non-critical statuses as well. And the size animation just simply uses a static image and grows it between zero to 100% showing 
I don't know, in this case, just showing the, the flame is on, I guess, and the level of the flame. Uh, trend curves are very popular for HMI screens. Uh, trend curves are used to just simply show uh, historical values and current values and levels of something as simple as a tank level, uh, monitoring of production, or some other analog tag. Uh, alarm values are used to show statuses of alarms. Like for instance, if a tank is tank level is too high or you know overfilling at too high of a rate, uh, you can trigger an alarm from within Indusoft, and you can display it on the screen through either a alarm window through a pop up or by sending a an alarm through digital output or some other means like email or SMS message. Uh, the reports, you can create reports from within Indusoft as well, based on the data from the analog inputs, digital inputs and digital outputs, as well as uh, record messages in CSV, TXT format, or other formats. And you can open those in Excel, uh, Word, you know, whatever software package uh, supports those formats. Uh, for the uh, recipe management, let me just show you a quick example of this. This just shows, uh, I guess, a recipe, but you can use the controls from within this uh, screen to create your own recipe and uh, from within your project, uh, create a similar window. Uh, for industry examples, uh, this uh, just shows a manufacturing process, probably stamping process, in which metal plates are feeding from left to right on a conveyor and going into the various presses and uh, just showing the status of it. The analog tags would be tied to the bottom, showing the part progress and the status of the machinery. If, for instance, the alarm condition were triggered, uh, you know, there could be a pop up window or some sort of notification on the screen as well. Uh, ovens and furnaces. Uh, this just uses animation to show a process happening. In this case, uh, there's uh, analog, or I'm sorry, auto or manual control, as well as a temperature tag associated with uh, the slider type widget where uh, within that was shown in the animation. If you wanted to, for instance, use some of these objects in your project, uh, you can simply go to the demo which this was from and you know see how it's implemented and perhaps copy some of the uh, uh, formatting into your project. Uh, wastewater treatment or just water demo showing tank levels, uh, valve statuses, a trend curve on the left side. Uh, these values would be associated with analog tags. These would probably be associated with digital tags or alarm values uh, showing some uh, tank level percentages and an alarm window down here showing, for instance, uh, pipeline pressure too high and the time and notification. Uh, let's see, here's a wastewater application. Uh, this just shows, I guess, oxygenation of the uh, water and flow values. Uh, oil and gas demo. Oil pressure, oil flow associated with analog tags. Uh, this is similar to the animation that uh, was shown in the animation screen, a trend curve, which is shown sideways in this case, and a nice image in the background to show the process. That one's not too impressive to me. This one, again, just a event window up here, similar to an alarm window. Uh, on off control, which you can control manually in this case. Sometimes you want to allow control through the HMI. Other times you want to just simply show the process happening. If you want to have controls, you can allow the ability to change status through this window, or you can uh, you know, limit it to different uh, security levels as well. So for instance, if you had a an operator at the workstation, of course you want to allow him to have controls, but say, I don't know, just someone monitoring the process through uh, like the management window or something, or just a data logging application. You just want to show the process happening and 
uh, allow them to only view the status. So you can create a similar window, but just not have the ability to be able to change the IO status in your controls or HMI screen. Here's a wind power application. Uh, just shows the various turbine statuses by clicking on them. A very simple application once you create the main screen, again, a map screen showing positions of the turbines. But at the same time, the, this screen over here on the right side is roughly the same thing. You just uh, change the turbine number, which changes the tags associated with the screen. And the animation shows the various uh, values or statuses of the turbines in this case. Uh, solar power. Again, very similar, using some animation to show uh, some analog values associated with between 0 to 10 kilowatts in this case, or 0 to 100%. Uh, scaling is, of course, able to be done within Indusoft, so you can adjust your percentage, like say 0 would be equal to 4 milliamps, uh, 10 kilowatts would be equal to 20 milliamps, and you just scale between the two and show the animation here. Uh, this is just showing some analog statuses, a nice image and background, a control panel, very popular application, uh, just simply a bunch of buttons with some manual controls, uh, digital display and animation in the middle. And you can control your process, view statuses. Uh, you can do multiple windows. So you can, you know, can go from one window to another window to show status, maybe show alarm, then show a trend curve. And then if you want to create a home screen or a welcome screen, you can certainly do that as well. Um, this concludes the demo for Indusoft. But if anyone has any questions, uh, please feel free to contact us through email by calling us uh, through chat. Uh, we're here to help you with any of your applications. Thank you very much, and please let us know if we can help with any applications.